Today I called Tesla. We talked about memory. We talked about connectivity. We talked about hurricanes. Lots of great information to share with you. Be sure to watch this video to the end. Welcome back to Test Lucky, the YouTube channel where you can follow the adventures of Lucky the Tesla. I am really excited to share the learnings from my call to Tesla today. But first, as it relates to our channel, if you already love Tesla, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, or if you're just curious about electric vehicles in general, please subscribe to our channel, Test Lucky, and click the bell for notifications. All of our videos are Tesla related. We just hit 400 subscribers. We are very excited about that milestone and becoming a subscriber and clicking like on our videos are two simple ways that you can show support for a small channel like ours. So thank you very much. I do wanna go ahead and put the specs for Lucky up on the screen so that you can see that she's an older 2016 P90D Model X. We have Hardware One, we have MCU One in our vehicle, and all of the questions that I have for Tesla are obviously based on the perspective of the like older vehicle that uh, we are so lucky to have. So question number one, I asked about hurricanes because there is a hurricane headed to Florida as we speak. Uh, right now, the Florida Keys is sort of outside of the uh, cone of danger, but the hurricane is still headed towards Florida. And I was just sort of curious what recommendations uh, Tesla has for uh, vehicle owners uh, when hurricanes are coming. So, you know, Tesla doesn't have any like real um, specific preparation documents uh, that they share on their website or any information in the manual. The representative today did tell me and confirmed that, you know, damage from flooding and wind associated with hurricanes is not covered in the warranty. He didn't really expect it to be. He said that's something that you would have to take up with your insurance um, company. That would be an insurance claim. Uh, but uh, I specifically wanted to get some details from him about the flooding and the battery because we all know the battery is on the floor, the, you know, bottom of the vehicle and uh, Tesla's, you know, right a little bit low to the ground. So I wanted to know how much clearance there is on the battery from the ground in case we wanted to like try to elevate Lucky in our garage here in Big Pine Key by like driving her up on some like sort of ramp system. Um, we were here in for Hurricane Irma back in 2016. Was it 16 or 17? 17. 2017. And we had two feet of water in our garage. So obviously that would be a situation where a storm that bad is coming. We need to evacuate Lucky. But I was just trying to see if, what the what the clearance is. And this is what the representative told me that, you know, in Lucky, the Model X, there are two settings as far as the suspension is concerned. We have regular and we have low as it relates to the two uh, settings for the suspension. Now, in the regular setting, there is nine inches of clearance between the bottom of the battery and the ground. And then if you have the suspension set on low, that reduces to six inches. So there's about a three inch difference in those two settings. So Lucky's battery is only nine inches off the ground. So if we thought we were going to have storm surge, we would need to, you know, elevate her, you know, significantly above that nine inch mark. What I was thinking about doing, which I don't think we're going to actually have to do for this particular hurricane, was to drive her to a parking garage and park her on the second or third floor of a public parking garage and just pay for parking as, you know, cheap Tesla insurance. That's something that we would do if there was like a tropical storm or maybe a hurricane category one headed to the Keys. If it's category two, then we're getting lucky as far away from the uh, hurricane as we could. But I thought that this was really great information about the difference between the regular and the low setting and the um, clearance with the uh, battery. 
I also asked, do the superchargers work if there are widespread uh, power outages due to a hurricane? This isn't question number two. This is sort of like question one, sub-question A or B. Usually my questions are multiple questions in one. But uh, the representative said that the superchargers definitely work during times of power outages in that are widespread, you know, due to natural disasters like hurricanes, that they have a power wall that is used as like a generator backup at the superchargers. And if, let's say, you know, Orlando is uh, like completely out of power for like, you know, entire county, and there's superchargers uh, in that county, not only will they work, but they will work at the same speed that they do under normal conditions. So if you are evacuating a hurricane in your Tesla or dealing with the aftermath of a hurricane with power outages, you do not have to worry about the superchargers uh, working for you. I thought that was great, great news. Okay. That covers everything related to hurricanes. Um, I will also say that uh, if anyone has any other insights in um, on this topic, to go ahead and leave them in the uh, comments below. Would love to hear people's experiences evacuating hurricanes, dealing with the aftermath of hurricanes. I did actually also do a Google search just to see what would come up on this topic, and I will show you here on the screen. This this is interesting too. I almost forgot this. I'm glad I didn't. Charge the Tesla to 90% the night before leaving and increase it to 100% shortly before leaving so that the charge reaches about 100% or reaches 100% about the time you are ready to leave. Charging while evacuating um, with supercharging, Tesla's network is the simplest, fastest way to charge once you're on the road. So charge it to 90% and then bump it up to 100% as close as possible before you leave for your evacuation. So luckily we're not gonna have to do that here uh, for this particular storm, but I'm glad to have that information for the future. Okay, let's move on to question number two. This question is also a follow-up to the software update video that we just posted earlier this week. I think that was v10.2, 2020.24.11.6 is the update that I think uh, that was. And we were very confused about the fact that I had changed the modem router in our house for our home Wi-Fi network the night before uh, we did the software update and I did not update the settings in Lucky. I didn't connect her to the new network name with the new network password, but somehow we were able to complete the over the air software update. So I was very, very curious about this topic and I will show you some comments um, that were left on that software update video. Thanks very much to John Poldo for the great details that he shared in the comments section. I'm gonna put this up on the screen. He gave me some clues that led me to the question that Tesla gave me some great details on. First of all, John writes here, your software update probably was downloaded via Lucky's cellular service or download prior to your modem router change. And then you can see in the comment below, he goes on to add a lot more details about the premium connectivity with the Teslas, which is a topic that I really didn't know that much about. Um, I went ahead and did a Google search on this as well. It talks about now how Tesla offers premium connectivity, uh, connectivity as a a uh, subscription that provides the capability to access all of the car's multimedia features over cellular. Many Teslas, including Lucky, I was able to verify this on our account, are already grandfathered into having premium connectivity for the lifetime of the vehicle. Is it connectivity or connectivity? I think I'm just saying connectivity because I've been looking at like hurricane cones on the uh, internet every uh, three hours to see what the storm is doing. Uh, this Google search also from tesla.com uh, had a great document here 
with some more details. I'm going to put a link in the description and reference uh, some of these uh, as well in the question. But uh, what I was able to learn from the Tesla representative, he was able to go into the system and see that we installed that latest software update at 5.18 p.m. on July 28th but that the download started at, five, at 4 54 p.m. the day before uh, on the 27th and it took until 2 18 p.m. the following afternoon on the 28th for that software to come down. So the representative said that based on the fact that it took almost 22 hours for that software upload to uh, so software update to download to Lucky, that he was certain that it was due to Lucky connecting with the premium uh, connectivity package and the you know the cellular to get that uh, update. This is not the recommended method. They highly recommend that you are attached to your home. Wi-Fi network and not a hotspot either. Hotspots can be problematic with software updates, um, so I'm told. But anyway, based on the duration of time it took for this download to come, there is no doubt that we got lucky that the uh, um, update, the si file size, you know, must not have been, you know, tremendously large, although it was more than just bug fixes. So it did have a little something, something in there. And that's how we got the uh, software update without being connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm really grateful to John for putting this information in the comments because, like I said, it also led me to this Tesla document so that I could learn more about this uh, topic. C connectivity is an important part of all Tesla cars, further enhancing the driving experience by providing access to features that require data usage, including streaming media and music, live traffic visualization, and more. Uh, it goes in to say that if you have a Model S or a Model X that was ordered on or before June 30th of 2018, you have that free premium connectivity. It's uh, connectivity. Uh, the word is going to plague me. I'm, I'm going to have to move on to the next question so that I can stop saying connectivity. Um, it helps with the satellite uh, view maps. It's required for in-car streaming music and media over cellular, which is something I do all the time. And um, you can log into your Tesla account to see if you have the connectivity package or if you need to purchase it if you're interested. Um, it shows here. Uh, anyway, great details in this uh, document link in the description uh, below. Question number three is related to the memory in the Tesla. And this question is inspired by a comment left on our recent mobile service appointment video by a gentleman named John Dunnigan, who is a dear friend of Teslucky because he was Carly's very first ever supercharger social time interview. If you haven't seen John's interview, make sure you go back to Carly's playlist of her supercharger social time interviews and look for the first one. Hi, John. So we mentioned in the Tesla mobile service appointment video that the Tesla representative had suggested clearing out the former um, road trip odometer, uh, the trip odometers, clearing those from time to time and also going into the navigation system and clearing out old destinations from time to time, doing that and then resetting the Tesla with uh, the pressing on both of the scroll wheels on the steering wheel. So on that video, John wrote the following comment. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen. Did he say why you should clear out your memory and what the double wheel press does? What does the car use it for if not to remember your searches and trip meters? And wouldn't it make sense for there to be a clear all button for those things? Um, 
first of all, I've done a little bit of this clearing out of the old um, searches in the navigation system, and I think a clear all button is one of the best ideas I've heard in a long time. And so, John, I am definitely going to send that suggestion to feedback at tesla.com. I think that would be an easy fix, and I would love to see that come through in a future over-the-air software update. But on today's call with the Tesla representative, I did ask them, like, I explained the feedback, uh, and he said um, that it was good suggestion, and I said, well, what is the benefit to doing this with um, the memory? And he said it basically just makes everything like run smoother and run faster. And he gave the example like, you know, any phone that doesn't have a lot of space left or a computer, it's got like lots of applications open, lots of big documents running, and it's just using up all the memory that things tend to like freeze up or just go like sluggishly, you know, that sort of thing. He, he did give an example of another uh, customer that he spoke to who actually did like so much searching in the navigation system on road trips that he maxed out the memory in the GPS and it just wouldn't actually like search for locations anymore. He said that's rare, um, you know, but it can happen. The representative from Tesla also suggested doing that double pressing down on both the scroll wheels on the Tesla wheel to reset the vehicle. He recommended doing that proactively uh, once a month. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Now, as it relates to this memory issue, I'm going to do a little science experiment here. First of all, I'm going to show you the process of removing the searched uh, locations in the navigation system. And I'm going to put in a destination uh, before doing that and then after it, and we're gonna time it and see if it's any faster. So I'm gonna kind of show you the process right now and we'll see if it makes a difference. So let me show you in Lucky's screen here that I have actually deleted quite a few of our old searches. Right now I'm back to October, 2019 and I just have had so many searches that I was deleting them and then I got the idea for this experiment so I went ahead and stopped. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a location, a far away location into the navigation system and we're going to time it here on Carly's iPad and then we're going to see how long it takes and then I'm going to go back and delete all the rest of the um, searches and I'm going to do the double scroll wheel reset and we're going to do the same search and see if it's faster. Okay. Are you ready for this? This is like really like high science uh, going on on uh, Tess Lucky. Uh, so the first search that we're going to do, I'm going to hit start here. We're going to go in and we're going to search for six flags Magic Mountain, all the way in California. Six Flags Magic Mountain. Uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California, 2,318 miles away. So I'm going to tap on that and we're going to see how long it takes for it to come up in the navigation system here. So this is probably where like having the memory cleared out and refreshed might make a search like this go a little faster. We're going to find out. Okay, so now it came up. That was about 50 seconds and it shows you that to go to Six Flags uh, Magic Mountain is a long way. Let's see what happens when we click on uh, Begin Trip. It's uh, still calculating. Defuniac Springs. We love Defuniac Springs. All right, so let's see. It's still calculating. This is a long trip, though. I think this is a pretty good example, and we'll see if... Uh, 
doing this experiment with their memory, you know, makes uh, much of a difference, if, uh, if any difference. I, I feel like this is a little bit slow. I mean, I know this is like across the uh, country, but I feel like Lucky could do this a little bit faster. Okay, we're still waiting for Lucky to go ahead and um, start this trip. Okay, so two minutes and 20 seconds to calculate the, uh, the trip here, all the superchargers necessary. Now it says total trip 179 miles. Uh, we know that that's not the case. So I believe that Lucky is still thinking about it and uh, probably has more refreshing to go before we get the uh, before we get the exact All right, I want to see a total trip that uh, makes more sense than 179 miles, three hours and 15 minutes. I wish we lived three hours and 15 minutes from Six Flags Magic Mountain. Okay, there we go. Now at the like three minute and 23 second mark, it shows us 2,911 miles and 44 hours, nine minutes uh, with charging stops. Many of these places we've been to and have fond memories of from our road trips to and from uh, Las Vegas. Okay, so now we're gonna stop the timer and I'm gonna go in, I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch all of this, but I'm gonna go in and one by one, I'm gonna swipe all of these searches until we have no searches. Okay, that took me a little while. I literally just swiped a few hundred, hundreds of uh, search destinations in the navigation system because I have a tendency wherever I'm going, even if I know how to get there, of using the navigation system just because I like the data. I like to see what the battery uh, ch uh, charge will be when I arrive at my destination and how long it's going to take me to get there and all of that. Uh, so anyway, so now you can see that there, the navigation uh, recently searched locations has been completely wiped clean. And now I'm going to go ahead and press on, I can't reach it without putting the phone down, but I'm going to press on this button and this button and hold them down at the same time to reset the uh, computer in Lucky. Okay, I just finished doing, holding those scroll wheels down for the reset. So Lucky's touch screen went dark. And then once we get that back up, we will try our experiment uh, with a new timer. So we're gonna reset the timer to nothing. All right, so it took almost two minutes to reset the touch screen in Lucky, starting the timer. Six flags, magic mountain, Valencia, California. Pulling up the map, calculating route. Hmm. It doesn't really seem like it's any uh, faster, to be honest. Mm, no, I would not say that it's uh, faster. I actually think it's like slower now. 
All right, but let's click on begin trip and see if this part is any faster. Now that wheel is spinning pretty good. I don't know, maybe it just took Lucky a little bit to wake up here. The wheel is definitely spinning faster. Still calculating. Here's where we are on the timer. And now just waiting to see when the total trip mileage comes up. I think that'll be the real, the real uh, testament to whether this is actually faster now or not. All right, calculating route. And that's interesting, we're at that 170. Oh, okay, you know what? Two minutes and uh, I would say 13 seconds. It was over three minutes before. So it does look like it was a little bit uh, faster, just a little bit. And that leads us to the bonus question. Carly really wanted me to ask this question. She asked it during the filming of our software update video. And when she knew I was calling Tesla today, she's like, don't forget to ask my question. So the bonus question today, Carly wanted to know if it's common for the touchscreen in the Teslas to get cracked. So this is what the representative had to say about that. He said, glitches are much more common than cracks. He said, the most common issues with the touchscreen are pixelation issues. We actually had one of those and had our MCU replaced uh, in Lucky when we were in Las Vegas. That was a previous uh, Tesla mobile service uh, appointment. Uh, so pixelation issues are just not turning on or the most common issues. He said the touchscreen is very strong. He said it would be very difficult for like a human being to like hit it with like somebody's elbow and like crack or break the screen. He said it would be, you know, it really would need to be more of an intentional situation. I mean, obviously, if you take a hammer to the screen, the screen's going to crack, right? He said if you're loading like you know, long pieces of like two by four wood into the car and you like inadvertently like hit the screen, it'll crack. But he said in most cases, with just like a human body, like accidentally hitting it or their purse hitting it or something like that, it would uh, withstand that uh, pressure. So pretty strong screen. And Carly, just so you know, it's pretty rare for it to be broken, but I still ask you to be very, very careful and treat Lucky every inch of her uh, as precious as she deserves to be treated, okay? So be careful. Thanks for the question, Carly. So those are my learnings from today. I welcome your comments. I'm learning so much from the viewers of Test Lucky in your comments. I, we appreciate that so very, very much. If you would like to watch more Test Lucky, I'm going to put links up in the top corners for number one, our most popular video ever, which is our road trip from Florida to Las Vegas. And I'm also going to put up a playlist of all of these today I called Tesla videos. If you want to learn more from my prior calls to Tesla, go ahead and click on that playlist. Thank you for watching Test Lucky. We'll see you in our next video. Safe travels, everyone, and be safe out there in the world.